This story is the reason that we've gathered here this evening. This story is the reason that we gather here every Sunday. This is the story of our faith, recorded by Luke in his gospel, the second chapter, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in brands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this sure as heck is not the way I planned Christmas this year. I had such plans. They were wonderful. We were going to do breakfast in Bethlehem, something I've done in other churches before, where we have kids come in from the neighborhood as well as our own children, and we feed them a good breakfast, and they get to see the story of Jesus' birth acted out by adults in costumes with whoever happens to have a baby, took me 32 years before I had a baby boy, Jesus. They were always girls. We were going to have so many activities. We thought about a live nativity. We talked about studies. We talked about singing and caroling and parties. And look what happened. 2020 happened. And just this week, the Christmas star, really the alignment of two planets that were aligned in such a way to give light that looked like the star that hadn't been seen in thousands of years, Everyone was excited. We all rushed out in the yard, and what happened? Cloud coverage. 2020 happened again. i not making light of this year. We have had untold sorrow in this country and throughout the world because of the pandemic, something the world hasn't experienced on this level since 1918 into 1919 the great Spanish flu epidemic that wiped out so much of the population. And this is not over yet. Then we saw the nation divided politically between parties at war with one another, just as the Congress of the United, Meth United Methodist Church, that was a Freudian slip, the United States government seemed to be at war with each other. No one wants to work together. Everyone just wants to dig in and hold their position. Then there is the United Methodist Church, isn't there? on the verge of schism, with general conference pushed down a year because the place where we were going to hold that great convention that was going to separate us one from the other would not allow the church to meet there with delegates from around the world. And that argument and that break up is still being spoken of in more and more certain terms all the time. 2020 happens again. And we saw great racial divides in the nation. People standing up saying Black Lives Matter and other people saying to them, no, we don't want to hear that because all lives matter. Blue lives matter. My life matters. Your life matters. Everyone's life matters. No one's life seems to matter, though, does it? 2020 happens again. 
certainly has been a year. But this I know, this is why Christ came. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for the year 2020. Christ was born for the pandemic. Christ was born for the unrest. Christ was born to bring his peace again to the earth. Christ was born to do away with the power of sin and death. Christ has come so that we might live forever. I was able to choose the lessons for this evening, and I knew you wanted to hear the one that I just read, the one with the shepherds and the angels and the baby lying in the manger. We find ourselves coming back to that story again and again because it regrounds us, it reorients us to the truth that is ours in Jesus Christ. But the traditional epistle lesson for Christmas Eve is not the one we read. The traditional lesson comes from the book of Titus, and it's the only time we read it in the year. But I got to pick the lessons tonight, and I picked my favorite verses of Scripture, Romans 8, 39, and 39. I'd like to read them to you again. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not a pandemic, not a virus, not political divisions, not divisions within our own denomination, not the losses that we have all experienced this year, not the economic downturn, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ was born exactly for times like this. And it's times like this when we know how much we need him. So my prayer for you this Christmas is that you will come together in heart and mind, that you will stand against the darkness, that you will light candles in your own life that shed the light of Christ to others because the world is hurting, the world is dark, the world is scared right now, but you have an abundance what the world needs because you have Jesus Christ as your Savior. And he came exactly for this. Every Christmas I reread a poem, and I want to read it to you tonight written by the late Madeline Lengel. Some of you know her for some of the children's books she's written through the years. Some of you know her poetry. Some of you know that she was a devout Christian. She wrote this about Jesus' birth in Bethlehem years ago. It is called First Coming. He did not wait till the world was ready, till men and nations were at peace. He came when the heavens were unsteady and prisoners cried out for release. He did not wait for the perfect time. He came when the need was deep and great. He dined with sinners and all their grime, turned water into wine. He did not wait till hearts were pure. In joy he came to a tarnished world of sin and doubt, to a world like ours of anguished shame. He came and his light would not go out. He came to a world which did not mesh, to heal its tangles, shield its scorn. In the mystery of the word made flesh, the maker of the stars was born. We cannot wait till the world is sane to raise our songs with joyful voice, for to share our grief, to touch our pain. He came with love. Rejoice, rejoice. Christ was born for this and nothing can separate us from his love. Amen.